Okay, so now we're going to Rashi number 11 in the course Rashi's of Jyotish. So the 11th sign is Aquarius. <clears throat> now Aquarius is described as a man holding a water jar or a water pot by Parashra. And this is an important distinction to make because in if you learn, if you're coming from a Western astrology background, you've probably been told to think of or you've seen Aquarius as, you know, like a woman with this luscious breasts and just pouring out water from a water pot onto like a fertile valley and, you know, Aquarius brings the spring rains and all this jib jab. Um, you know, like that actually has drastically distorted our understanding of Aquarius. Um, that comes from the tarot card, like the sun card, you know, and they, they just sort of turn over time. People just sort of associated that with Aquarius. And that may be a card that is associated with Aquarius, like for people that do both tarot and astrology. But I'm just a strict Jyotishi, like Vedic astrology. I, I don't read cards. So I just don't like that kind of embellishment for Aquarius. It's not that Aquarius can't have to do with feminine energy or nurturing but we already saw what signs the moon rule. We already saw Taurus and Cancer. That's where life is nurtured and born, and all these things. And Aquarius is like the end of the zodiac. That's all done by now. Um, so Aquarius is much more, you'll get a clearer picture of it if you pay attention to the sutras and what they actually say, rather than just kind of like take the the pop culture stuff for for the gospel truth. So let's, with that having been said, Let's look at what Aquarius is about. Okay, so Aquarius is described as, this is the exact quote from Brihat Prashar Hora Shastra, uh, four, chapter four, Rashi characteristics, 21 and 22. Um, Kumba, which means pitcher or a jar or wa the water pitcher, you know? Kumba. <clears throat> Kumba is a jar holding man, deep brown color, medium bodied, two footed, vigorous during the day, standing in the middle of water, airy, front rising, tamasic, a sudra, abiding in the western region, and lorded by the son of the sun. So that gives us uh, plenty of things to contemplate. So, um, Again, it's a jar holding man. It's not a woman. It's a jar holding man. It's not really emphasizing that it's a man like having all this water and gushing it forth. I mean, it can have to do with it has to do with all that as well. But just a jar holding man kind of captures this quality of like uh, he's holding a jar. He's holding emptiness, you know. So the Aquarius is someone who's holding on to their emptiness, even though they're surrounded by fullness, because it says also that it's standing in the middle of water. Water, the word for that is Purna, uh, that water, that word can also mean fullness in Sanskrit, basically. And so an Aquarius is someone who is holding on to their emptiness, even when they're surrounded by fullness. <clears throat> so Aquarius is actually symbolizing the state of the ego mind. It is this point that we reach when we've like, you know, when we've come through the whole zodiac. The last thing left to work out and dissolve is just our ego mind our emptiness, our sense of lack, our sense of ego self is the only thing that's keeping us from merging with spirit, which is Pisces, and which will happen right after this sign. So there's really a lot of beautiful connections to this sign, and um, there's a lot more that I would like to say about it, but this is kind of more of an introductory video. So <clears throat> it does deal with people that will work involved in water, will be, you know, working with water purification or moving water or holding water or tanks or aqueducts or any kind of thing like that or even people that deal with pools or you know like anything that holds and contains water you'll see Aquarius important <clears throat> um, standing in the middle of water also hints that Aquarius rules islands because islands are standing in the middle of water and Aquarius really does come up when you see islands I've already done a series on environments on the Rashi so you can watch those if you want to know more about how to predict environments um, and uh, yeah two-footed it's biped it's intellectual like like um, you know we've already covered how that works it's airy you know it's a windy sign so it's based on um, pleasure and uh, social themes and 
interacting and getting you know validation from people before you finally you know that last bit of ego validation you need is Aquarius and then you move into Pisces where you're kind of merging with spirit <clears throat> and letting go of those things yeah it's Tomasic so it's just kind of like motivated by suffering and um, darkness and it wants to clear out that darkness that's again why it speaks to like working on one's psychology the holding of water symbolizes holding healthy emotions in a healthy emotional state, a healthy psychological state. Um, and it's a sudra, so it's oriented towards the now, the present moment, and, and you know, sensorial pursuits um, and service type work. And lorded by the son of the sun. So that's just a name for Saturn. So, yeah, that's pretty much it. Aquarius is, Aquarius is a very interesting sign. So now let's look at some examples of that. Okay, so you should be able to see my screen here. Uh, first chart is the chart of Bobby Fischer. This is uh, a chess genius. So Bobby Fischer was like um, a world champion of chess and he was a real, you know, intellectual genius. And he kind of like symbolizes a lot of that Aquarius energy. Um, and he has his Mercury K2 and Mars in Aquarius. <clears throat> but he also has his Atmakarika, which is Mercury there. So when you use the Atmakarika, <clears throat> the, the placement of the Atmakarika, um, that sign is going to be really, really important for the person in the Rashi chart, <clears throat> just as important as the rising sign, pretty much. So for him, his Atmakarika is Mercury, which rules games, like chess is a game, and it's with <clears throat> K2, so it's, he's very good at that from past lives, you see. It's in an air sign of the intellect and pleasure. <clears throat> it's in the seventh house of other people, which can have to do with competition, but more so because of Mars, which brings in the competition. But what's also funny is that Mars, um, like from the seventh house standpoint, the other enemies that he'll face, Mars is being starved by Mercury, and that's Mars's enemy. So that's him just crushing his enemies. I hope that makes sense. If not, that's getting a little too complicated if you don't know about all the Avashas and stuff. That's for the more collegiate students. Okay, so um, <clears throat> Mercury, though, his Abhmakaraka is in Aquarius, and he was a very individual person. He was a very weird person, very eccentric, kind of like a lot of Aquariuses. Um, he has it aspected, Rashi aspected by an exalted Jupiter in Cancer, which again speaks to being a brilliant person. Um, and he has Venus also Rashi aspecting that from Aries, which is, <clears throat> again, Venus and Jupiter are the learned, educated Brahmin planets. So he's got so much like learnedness and mind. He's got so much strength of mind. And then again, you know, we're not talking about we're focusing on Aquarius, but again, you know, how can you talk about the mind without looking at the moon? The moon is exalted in Bobby Fischer's chart, and it's in that exact zero to three degree section tropically perfectly. You know what I mean? And that's exactly what Parashur describes as the exact exaltation point of the moon, just zero to three of Taurus. And he was an exalted moon. You know, it's also amazing that it's in Ashwini Nakshatra, which is about the horse head, like powerful mind, <clears throat> you know, to Horses symbolize power um, in general in omens, like we say the word horsepower, you know. Um, Ashwini Kumaras are just really, really powerful problem solvers. And that's what, you know, being a, they're the physicians of the gods and all that. But in a lot of ways, like, they're more than just physicians. Um, they're really just like the, these epic knights of the zodiac in, or of the, you know, they're, they're like the knights of, of Hindu mythology in many ways. And... <clears throat> They're just these profound divine problem solvers. So he has his moon exalted there and he's a real, real problem solver. You know, that's what the chess was, was how to, you know, win the game. Um, so this is a very, a very unique example. And also um, Bobby Fischer had, he had a lot of like paranoia and stuff in his competitions. And he, and he felt that it was all rigged, like the Russians were rigging it against him. And you know, very well, very well could have been the case, you know, and he was a smart guy, and <clears throat> I don't really know, I'm not a chess expert, but I'm just pointing out because Aquarius has a lot to do with, like, <clears throat> it has to do with social themes and, like, even, like, uh, 
um, underground currents, social currents, things that are like underground kind of so, like communities and societies and things like that. But it also has to do with uh, paranoia, especially when it's in the seventh house um, with K2 and afflicted by Mars. So that's kind of interesting. Um, you know, just thought it was worth noting. Okay, and now let's look at, um, this is the chart of Jordan Peterson. He's a huge psychologist that got very, very popular. Um, now I'm not saying I agree with everything he says and all, but it's just like, you know, when someone goes from being a random professor to being like a worldwide name in just a couple years, um, <clears throat> it's usually worth looking at the chart, right? What's fascinating is when he first got popular, his birth data was not known. But in the last year, his, um, his wife has gotten cancer and then he was on these antidepressants and then he tried to get off of them. And it's funny because he always like, he was like, yeah, I support doing antidepressants. I think you should do that. And I was always like, what? That's crazy. Like, that's one things I couldn't agree with. And he couldn't get off his antidepressants and had to go to rehabs and crashed and had all, and is in a whole mess of it because of, um, because of relying on those pharmaceuticals and that more, you know, <clears throat> mainstream approach. And uh, the only reason I bring this up is because he has Saturn and K2 in Aquarius. So he's a very, very strong Aquarian person. And again, Aquarius is about becoming psychologically healthy. This guy is one of the biggest experts on psychology on the planet. But what's funny is with K2, you can overdo it. With K2 things like you can, you can be doing too much of that and not really realize it. And so he, he's probably been doing too much talking and analyzing with the K2 and Shravana and just, oh, there's back and forth. And, you know, his lectures, they just go on and on and on. And it's like, he can be right and wise and correct because look at how, look at how strong his Jupiter is. He's got a strong Mercury, you know, he's got a strong Saturn. So he's a sharp dude. He can be very correct, but he's like, it's like, why say it in two minutes when I could say it in two hours? You know what I mean? And he's just, just da 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 And um, Rahu in Leo is speaking to like, no, you need to like just, uh, as long as that psychology is pushing you to being a stronger person, you know, being um, more in touch with your solar energy, the divine masculine. And what's fascinating is that a lot of his, the reason he got popular was because he was basically really helpful for men and empowering men in the whole like kind of PC movement where like men don't know what to do, you know, and it's true, like as a white male, it's kind of like, you know, there's a lot of things that are, um, you can be as, you know, woke as you want to be, but still be judged. And then, you know, men don't really like know what to do in this modern society since they've been kind of castrated and sterilized in so many ways, like just the way that society is going. So this guy became very popular because he was like, no, like you can still be a good man and that's good. And you can, you know, and help people and help men basically embrace their um, Leo aspect. And um, he also, when he was younger, he like started going to a gym and working out and like that actually helped his health better than a lot of his psychology stuff. So we can see this kind of K2 Rahu Aquarius and Leo axis, but man, I mean, just what a, what an Aquarian person, you know, he kind of was, doing psychology and just doing his work and he was great and he knew the literature and it's like that's what these strong saturn people are like they're just going to be doing their dharma either way they're going to be doing it when you have saturn aquarius like that you're gonna you know you have a mission to do you're doing it you're bearing the water you know you're like i need to provide basically aquarius is about it's the water bearer because creating water tanks and all this stuff it symbolizes making life bearable for everyone so an Aquarius, when it's strong and healthy, just really wants to make life more bearable for everyone. And, and they, that, they do that because they know how painful it is, because they've reached that point where they can no longer run or hide from their ego and their lacks any longer. They can't go and be a Leo and have a great kingdom and, and, and run from Saturn you know, for a little longer. They, can't, they can no longer run from Saturn, which is in a sense, mortality, fate, the inevitable. The fact that we're all going to die, you know what I mean? And that there's nothing we can do about it. And to even, almost to even do anything in this world, like, oh, I want to love this person. Well, I mean, yeah, that's like you and this person are falling down a pit to your death. That's inevitably happening. And then you just like, oh, hey, you, you're cool. Well, we're still both about to die. Okay, but you're cool. Okay, now we're dead. You know, so like from the standpoint of Saturn, like all these things can be so trivial, you know what I mean? And so pointless in the grand scheme of things. 
You know, a year for him is 30 earth years. It's just working with a different type of consciousness. And so these types of people, they're playing the long game. You know, Aquarius is more about playing the long game and things aren't maybe that great for them in their first 30 years or their first Saturn return. But then later and later, things can get better and better. Um, so he's kind of an example of that because he got very popular and, you know, had a much more successful life experience later on in life. Um, what else do I have here? Um, now this is the chart of Ramakrishna. Ramakrishna was just a crazy bhakta. He was just a crazy lover of God. He's very, very well known in India, one of the most well known saints. And he has his ascendant in Aquarius, he has his son in Aquarius, he also has his Mars in Aquarius. He also has them aspected by an exalted Jupiter and a very strong Venus in Aries, funny enough. Um, <clears throat> He was someone who also, you could say, did a very good job of being an Aquarius and developing a healthy psychology because he got self-realized and got enlightened and no one doubt, doubts that he was an enlightened master. And he was so, it's fascinating how Jupiter is in sign of cancer and that's a very good placement for gurus and devotion. And Venus is aspecting his ascendant as well because he was so devotional. He was a very uh, devotional yogi and he also is a ruling planet in a water sign. Um, yeah, so this one's just pretty straightforward, but he, he, he got enlightened and then he bared that water, you know, he, he shared that gift of, of, you know, the divine consciousness with so many others and, um, you know, traditions and lineages still to this day are operating and people are still learning from this man and his greatness. So this is another really good example of Aquarius. All right. I think that, is that it? Um, oh, another one, Jim Carrey. Jim Carrey is someone who is a good, he's got, look, Saturn, Jupiter, Mercury, and K2 all in Aquarius. So he's a very Aquarian person. And he's also someone who, you know, was a real dreamer. Like Aquarius has a lot to do with your hopes and dreams and dreaming to the future and trying to make a better society for everyone. And that's, again, the humanitarian qualities, the wanting to make life more bearable. So he tried to do that through comedy. And what's fascinating is that he, I'll talk about this more when I talk about other things. Um, his, his chart's gonna come up more in the future, in future videos, but you know, he wrote a check to himself for a million dollars. Like, you know, he was one of those guys who was just like you maybe, just watching self-help, like listening to self-help tapes, audio books in a park in California, just dreaming about being a famous actor and making it in the world. And then he did, and then he realized that that wasn't even, you know, as satisfying as he thought. And then he got into spirituality, which is so Aquarian to, to do that, right? <clears throat> so he's got a major amount of Aquarius qualities in him. And then this is uh, John Stewart. So he hosted The Daily Show. He was kind of like the voice of the intelligent left aspect of America and their politics for a decade. And, um, so he's an Aquarius, right? Well, actually, we don't know if that's his rising sign, but he is Saturn in Aquarius and K2. So a lot of the same things I was just talking about with Jordan Peterson, really intellectual, really gifted, really brilliant, but almost too much chatter, almost too much talk with that K2 and Shravana. And I bet in his personal life, you could see how he needed to embrace more Leo and Rahu Mars things. Um, yeah, so... That's kind of funny. Yeah, I mean, my mind's kind of in a real nakshatra place right now because I want to teach this course in nakshatras and I've been doing a lot of cool research. So just for fun, you know, Pushya is the star of worship and prayer and faith and um, church, basically. And he has Rahu there and he always jokes and he always jokes throughout the Daily Show about his lack of faith, you know, um, being an atheist and only being able to have security in the intellect, which is, you know, that strong Saturn Aquarius. You know, so it's kind of funny how that how that is. Okay, I hope that gives you guys a feel for Aquarius. Um, there's certainly tons of other aspects and facets of Aquarius that I didn't get to, but you know, hope that helps. Feel free to leave a comment. Let me know your thoughts if you got placements in Aquarius or whatever. If this resonates. Thanks.